Well, thank you all for postponing your beer and sitting down for us. Um, very happy to have you here. Um, well, this is us, um, but we've talked about that. Um, we have slides. There is quite a bit of content on some of them. If you want to follow along, they're there. If you want to get them later, that's fine too. Um, I want to talk about a bit about what we're doing here. You, you've seen the purple shirts and dresses. There's 14 of us around here. There's now 45 people working at Yoast, which frightens the out of me. Um, because, well, it, uh, only five years ago, it was just me. Uh, luckily, my wife was always with me. Um, so uh, I'm very happy to present, be presenting alongside her. Uh, I've taken some pictures. You've seen the Yoast Lego uh, things. If you haven't, you should. Um, and then there's this slide. Well, Joost usually doesn't uh, do this, but I thought, when I have the opportunity to talk in front of an audience of a thousand people, I'm going to show off the thing I'm most proud of. <laughs> so, <laughs> these are our children, and no offense, Joost, the SEO plugin was a great achievement, but I think these are your best achievement yet. <laughs> Hello, still me. <laughs> So today, I, I could fill up the whole talk talking about my children, but I think you're not here to, <laughs> to hear me talking about them. So we're going to talk about SEO copywriting. So Joost's main focus and expertise always has been on SEO. And mine was on writing. And about two and a half years ago, I, I joined the company. And um, well, we, we started to get going on the importance of writing for SEO. And I think what we are presenting today is actually been the result of uh, two and a half years of work. So, Joost is first going to explain why SEO copywriting or copywriting in general is important for SEO. Well, let's start with Google. Um, of course, SEO focuses on all the search engines in the world, and there are, seem to be more search engines than Google. Um, but especially in Europe, I think we can say that search is Google. Um, and Google has a mission that is quite daunting, but also tells us a lot about what they want to do. Their mission is to organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful, which is quite a bit. It's not just all the information on the web, it's all the world's information, which is why you see them doing all these other things, scanning entire libraries. Um, you see them work on uh, things like Google Maps, where if you have a phone number on a wall somewhere and the Google Maps car comes by and scans that thing, a few days later, you'll actually be able to search for that phone number in Google Maps and it'll show you where it is on the wall. Google is getting frighteningly good at indexing everything. Now, what we try to do is we try to improve a website's position in the free or organic results. Those are the results that you see be below those three or four ads. Um, it's actually shocking sometimes how far down uh, the organic results are now these days. But for quite a few terms, you can still get an, an enormous amount of traffic by optimizing for SEO. And we've always been one of the companies telling you to do SEO in a way that um, we don't promote what we call scorched earth tactics. We won't be telling you to buy links. We won't be telling you to optimize your site in ridiculous ways that are not useful for the user. Why not? Well, because we prefer sustainable SEO. We prefer to build up your site in such a way that it will still be there and will still be ranking in two or three years from now and not be gone entirely. We've seen a lot of people do it the other way around. We actually help people every once in a while. They come to us for a review because they've burnt themselves hard. And it's usually quite a bit of work to get them back, and not always even really possible to get them back if they've done really stupid things. So we try to, to do SEO in a way that's sustainable and works in the long run. We try to do that by focusing not just on some technical things, but focusing on all the aspects of website optimization. We believe that you have to be the best result in order to be number one. This means that you have to think about a concept that we call holistic SEO. 
Holistic meaning all-encompassing. Everything is SEO, or SEO isn't everything else. So small things like technical excellence, which is, of course, fairly easy if you're using WordPress. Um, we, with Yoast SEO, try to do the, the remaining things that WordPress doesn't do well enough, we try to do in Yoast SEO so that we take all the technical stuff away from you, because it's not thing, uh, something that a normal user should be thinking about. We need you to have flawless security. And that means a, a tiny bit more than just installing a security plugin. Um, but at the same time, it's also something that we are very aware of, that it's not our main focus. So do talk to the guys at Sukari or someone else that is really good at WordPress security and make sure that your site is secure, because everything we talk about today doesn't really help you if your site gets hacked. We need to have good UX and UI. Who of you were in here for Matt's session? And who of you heard my lead from Google ask a question that was actually very shocking to me, saying, we, see, we still see 28% of new sites coming online and not being mobile friendly. I seriously can't understand how in 2016 that still happens. If you have sites or you're building sites and they're not mobile friendly, they're not working on any device, then you're doing it wrong. You need to have awesome PR and social, which means that you have to tell people about what you're doing, because you could be building the most awesome thing in the world, but if you're not telling people about that awesome thing, they will never get there. If you build it, they will come. It's something that in the Valley people have been shouting for quite a bit. And now all of these people are hiring growth marketers, which is just a glorified term for hiring good SEOs. If you look at all the growth hackers in the world that are famous now, and you look at their background, almost all of them are SEOs by background. There's a reason to that. You need to talk about these things. Marketing and PR are very important. But I hear you're thinking, we were going to talk about copywriting, right? Well, we will. Because with all of these things, they all work in, in tandem. But if your content is shitty, then they're also absolutely no use. So we need quality content. Now, there are more reasons why you need quality content. No, we're not there yet. You have to tell them something else. What do I have to tell them? <laughs> you have to tell them why quality content is important for SEO. So you've talked about holistic SEO. <laughs> yes? You probably don't know that. OK. No, not a slide. So this comes. happens all the time. <laughs> you know? It's my wife telling me that I'm doing things wrong, which is probably why we have a, a plugin and a company that actually works, because I just go off and talk, and then I forget oh, what I should actually talk about. Go to the next slide. You will see. You will see. <laughs> so quality content no, is important. next slide. It, it, quality content is important for SEO for one simple reason. If Google can understand all that, then quality content means that Google can understand your site. And it really goes to the extent of what does Google do with text? What does, why doesn't this work anymore? I was too quick, wasn't I? You were too quick. Yeah, sorry. So um, in, in the past, who here has done keyword st stuffing at some point? Who has maintained the site and stuffed keywords into pages? Come on, there's more of you. I know there is. <laughs> we all know this used to work. And we all know that this doesn't work anymore. Why is that? Well, it's fairly simple. Google has gotten better at actually understanding your text. A year ago, they released Hummingbird. Uh, I think it's about two years ago now, actually. They released Hummingbird in which they said, hey, we can understand your queries better. Um, they can understand if you search for the world's best SEO plugin, they'll actually search for best SEO plugin, and they know they have to ignore the word world, because that is not really that important to that query. So they truly understand your text. If they can do that to your queries, they can do that to your content too. So they can understand what you're talking about a lot better than most people are used to. And they're not thinking purely about keywords anymore. They're thinking about content and about topics in a far more overarching way than, than most people realize. 
And now we get to why quality content is also important. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so Joost already told why it's important for SEO, but quality content has always been important, just because of for another bunch of reasons. And the first one is that people will understand your message. So every article or piece of text you write and put on your site has a message, something you want people to remember or to do after they read your article. So it could be that you're just explaining your shipping process, and the explanation is the message you want to let it come through. If, a, if an article is really poorly written, then this message won't come through. So people won't understand what you're talking about if you don't write a nice text. Very important, most important thing. Second one, and this actually has a lot to do with SEO, is that high-quality content will, will will result in a low, lower bounce rate. So people come in from your, to your site from Google, and then they look at a piece of text. And when it's crappy, they will go away. And when it's good, they will stay at your site and read your article, maybe buy your stuff. If they go away instantly, this will result in a lower bounce rate, and eventually your ranking will go down. So very and a important. higher bounce rate. Oh, sorry, higher <laughs> bounce rate. Now I get to Always do nice to have him here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, third reason is that high quality content leads to more trust. If your articles are well written, you will come across as more legit and professional than when you have lots of typos and uh, lots of uh, mistakes in your grammar and it's really poorly everything. So very important to have more trust if your article is um, of better quality. And the last reason why high quality content is important is that it will gain more attention on social media. So for me to post something on my Facebook timeline, then I have to like and understand the message, and I should like it enough to, to, to send it to all of my friends, right? And if, if an article is really poorly written, I won't do that, and you won't do that either. So it's very important, and more attention in social media eventually leads to higher ranking as well. So, we knew all this, and then we thought, what, what do you think? Oh. Yeah, well, we, we thought, okay, so how do you write quality content? What is quality content? What is well-readable content? This is where we started to do research. This is also where I get to put a colleague um, who's sitting in front here, uh, on <laughs> Irene, uh, who we hired to do a lot of research into this. Irene is a linguist, and we, uh, together with Marika, she did a lot of research into, okay, so what makes a text readable? And uh, what are things in readable text that we can actually, in a programmatic way, do to help you write better text? Um, there's a whole story to that. But we've actually brought a magazine with you, and we will tell you to read that, because otherwise we will never get to our There's beers. There's a puzzle in there, too, so <laughs> grab one. Yeah. All right, come grab it at our booth. It's free. Um, if, if you all like it enough, we might even make it a quarterly, um, which I have been told is only funny for those of us in the WordPress community long enough. Um, I don't get that joke. <laughs> But uh, there, there's a lot to know there. Uh, what is really important to know is that we've done quite intensive research in to, okay, what is it that really makes a text readable? I'll leave it up to Marika to tell that because I can actually write readable text. Oh, you can now. <laughs> yeah. So we have four things that you should be focusing on if you want to write readable, nice, read text. And the first one is to focus on your structure. So before you start writing, I would advise you to think about what it is you want to tell your audience and to think about what are you going to tell them and in what order. So make kind of sort of a skeleton of your text. That structure is really important for people to grasp the message of your text and probably also important for Google to grasp the message of your text and to think about how they are going to do those rankings. So really important is clear paragraphs. A paragraph should have one idea, not two, one. And I think that um, for the web, you should start each paragraph with one core sentence, the sentence that really covers the topic that you're addressing in that paragraph. And why is that? Well, if people are scanning a text and they will come across a white space, they will read the first sentence after the white space. If that sentence is really the most important sentence of your paragraph, people will easily grasp the structure of your text. And you would want that. 
because it's hard reading from a screen. So one core sentence and then a few sentences to elaborate on your point, right? Don't write paragraphs that are too long, but don't add random white space just because it looks nice. We had a colleague, I won't mention his name. <coughs> Michiel. But, <laughs> <laughs> and he just was like, yeah, but now I've written like four or five sentences and I need a white space. Yeah, then either you are making your paragraph too long because it's two ideas, and then you should have separate paragraphs for them, or you should do something else. <laughs> but not randomly, you should think about that. He never does it anymore. So, and use transition words, which will, uh, is something that my son with, I don't know what's, what the equivalent of uh, Group 6 in Holland for you all guys is, but he's 10 and he's learning about these words in Dutch. And he says, well, if I come across such a word, I know what is coming. Yes, readers know what is coming if you use these words. So if you are enumerating, use words to help people understand, oh, there's something coming, something else. So first of all, also another will help people to grasp the structure of your text more easily. So use these kinds of words. Use clear headings. Th these are important for SEO as well, so you should, you should Put your, the, the words you want to be found on in these headings, because these words are probably also the topic of your text, or you're doing it wrong. And then make sure that the paragraph that comes after a, a heading is, well, is summarized in that heading. Headings are also the, the thing that, that readers need to grasp the structure of your text. Make sure your text is easy to read. You could have a blog for PhDs only. And then you can write like really difficult texts or really, uh, you could do that. But most of us will have a general audience. Well, perhaps most of you will have a development audience. But that's another story. But if you have a general audience, use short sentences and simple words. So make your sentences about 20 words per sentence. That's about the amount of words people can can, can keep in their, in their short-term memory, and um, getting lots of sentences longer than 20 words makes it really hard. Use simple words, that means words with less than three syllables, and keep your audience in mind. Developers well, understand. Less than four. What? Less than four syllables. Less so than you've four. made it very hard for yourself with that e yeah. equal or less than yeah. mark. I don't understand that. No. <laughs> I, I can't pronounce the word syllables either. <laughs> It's hard. <laughs> so make sure it's easy to read and make sure your text is nice to read. And that's a hard one because style is something that some people have and others, well, just lack. But uh, you could do some things. Avoid passive voice. Passive voice is when the object, of, and so, no, sorry, the subject of your sentence isn't in the sentence. So this product can be bought in our web shop. It's not clear who or what is doing anything. And that results in very distant writing, so it doesn't appeal to, 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 the, to your audience. It becomes very distant and weird. A better alternative would be to say, customers can buy this product in our web shop. So avoid passive voice and mix it up. Use synonyms, yes, no keyword stuffing. Google understands the synonyms as well. So use them in your, in your, in your text. Uh, mixed sentence length, so longer and shorter sentences, shorter and somewhat longer paragraphs, and make variation in word order. And if you do all these things, you will be great, but it's very hard, so. Well, it, it, in, if you do all these things, yeah. you'll not need Yoast SEO 3.3 or not the new readability analysis that we put in there. Um, we called this content analysis at first, and then we told everyone that their content was bad. <laughs> Apparently, some of you didn't really like that. So Help now me. we call it readability, and we say needs improvement. Yeah, we, we, we got it when we read the Dutch, <laughs> the Dutch translation of content uh, is bad. Then I got it. The, well, let's just say we're Dutch and we're harsh. Um, so we, we took, didn't mean to. We took a bit of UK style <laughs> and, and made it readability needs improvement. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's good today if we take things from the Brits and learn things from them, right? Especially on a day like today. Um, <laughs> it, 
It's in our free plugin, so don't worry. This is not me talking to you about buying our stuff, um, even though I do want you to buy our stuff because that pays for all of us. But um, this is here for everyone. What we try to do is we try to make all these things that Marika just talked about into rules. And these are rules that actually tell you, like, hey, you've got over 25% 20, of your sentences is longer than 20 words. Maybe your text is too hard to read. We already had the flesh reading ease text, uh, test in Yoast SEO for quite a while. Um, we, we now moved it to the readability tab. Um, the, the funny thing is that of all these things, the flesh reading ease test is probably the least actionable test in there because it, it creates a score, but it does that by doing, a, by doing a calculation of the amounts of hard words you use, the amounts of long sentences you use, et cetera. So it's actually pretty hard to action that. All the other ones are very actionable. So uh, we say 14% of your sentences contains passive voice. And you'll go like, OK, so what use is it to me when you say 14% of your sentences uses passive voice? Well, it's very useful because there's this mark here, this nice look uh, button. I was very happy to see it in Matthias' presentation on his first slide, actually. Um, if you press that button, then we'll actually highlight the, the sentences in your editor, showing you which sentences are in passive voice and which sentences are too long, etc. As you start typing, the highlighting will go away immediately because the editor is an enormous art in to integrate with. <laughs> I won't swear on stage, or not too much, at least. Um, so this is absolutely a work in progress. So we're, we're doing more and more of these things. Uh, we'll actually probably be releasing uh, in the next month or so, uh, two or so more. Um, of these six that we have now, uh, only three work in non-English, because a lot of these things need word lists and other uh, methods of actually seeing whether it's passive voice or transition words, et cetera. So we're working actively on getting this to more languages. Uh, but bear with us, and in fact, we will probably be asking for help at some point for several languages. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions on this?